Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. All praise is due to Allah. We praise Him, we seek His help, and we ask for His forgiveness. We take a refuge with Allah from the evil of ourselves and from the evil consequence of our evil actions. Whomsoever Allah guides, no one can misguide. But whomsoever Allah leaves to go astray, no one can guide. And I testify that indeed Allah alone is worthy of worship, and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his servant and his messenger. Today, brothers and sisters, we're going to be talking about two very important but interconnected topics which follow up from what we were talking about last time. Last time we talked about the importance of ruling and judging by that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed. And from that you would have, have understood, inshallah, you would have understood very well that this religion of Islam is based upon the guidance, the revelation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's what we call tawfiqiyah. So we can't guess how to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We can't guess how to worship Allah. Worshiping Allah is based upon revelation and guidance from Allah. And therefore we are obliged to go back to the Qur'an, to the teachings of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in order to know how we should worship Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, the exalted, the mighty, the wise. And that is why today we are going to begin with a very, very important issue. And uh, Imam Al-Dhahabi, he put it in his book as the 14th major sin. But I have, in a sense, pushed this sin forward further forward and made it a higher status uh, primarily because of its great seriousness and that is lying about Allah and his messenger and the reason I've done that is because lying about Allah and his messenger some scholars they actually said that actually it is worse than shirk now how can something be worse than shirk how can there be anything worse than shirk well the scholars said it on the basis that every single shirk comes about because people lie about Allah and His Messenger or that people talk about Allah and His Deen without knowledge. And this is the reality if you think about it. Indeed, Ibn al jawzi he mentioned in his tafsir of the Qur'an, that some scholars are of the opinion that telling lies about Allah and His Messenger is disbelief and that it takes a person outside the community of Islam. Without doubt, lying about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger is amongst the most serious of the serious sins and it is something that we should be very, very careful about. And let us see what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He mentioned. He mentioned in Surah Al Zumar which is the 39th surah in the 60th ayah. And on the day of resurrection, you will see those who told lies about Allah, their faces will be darkened. And also in Surah An-Nisa, which of course is the fourth surah, in the 50th ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentioned the meaning of which is, look how they invent against Allah. And enough is that as an open manifest sin. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about some of the people of the book and he is saying, look how they invent a lie against Allah. And Allah says, that's enough of a sin. If you, you don't need any more sin after lying about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what a terrible thing because lying about Allah strikes to the very heart of what the purpose of life is. The purpose of life is to worship Allah. And if Allah 
can only be worshipped through knowledge, if Allah can only be worshipped correctly through the revelation and the guidance that He has sent, if people are lying about Allah, that means they are inventing religion, and that means they are changing religion, and that means in fact they are leading people away from the very purpose for which they have been created. And so the Prophet ﷺ also himself mentioned, for the one who tells a lie concerning me, a house will be built for him in hellfire. And the Prophet ﷺ also said, whoever tells a deliberate lie against me or concerning me, his abode will be in the hellfire. And in fact, this hadith is one of the most frequently mentioned and authentic hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. And there is also a narration in Sahih Muslim that whoever tells a tradition or a hadith from me, knowing that it is false, is amongst the liars. And we will be telling and we will be talking about the major sin of lying later on in our series. Also the Prophet ﷺ said in a hadith that was also collected by Muslim, telling a lie about me is not like telling a lie about someone else. The one who tells a lie about me will have his abode in the fire. Now it is certainly something true that has happened in our history, that there have been times and there still are people who invent sayings and they attribute things to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And they claim that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said this and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that. And in the past people have done that in order to justify many different things, in order to try and prove their position concerning something or to get some temporary benefit for themselves. And that is why very early on in our history, the scholars began to develop a system a system through which and by which we could know what things have truly come from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and what things have been fabricated and invented about him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this of course is the knowledge of the hadith, the ilmul hadith. And the isnad system was developed, that is the system of the chain of narrators. Through this system of the chain of narrators, they were able to identify what things were truly from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and what things were invented about him. Because they understood the importance of preserving this knowledge and making sure that when something is mentioned and something is said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that, that we have a means and we have a system in place in order to authenticate that. And again, I talked that about that in some detail. Uh, during my series, the proof that Islam is the truth, and we talked about how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserved this deen through this system of the isnad and through the knowledge of the hadith. So, alhamdulillah. So, brothers and sisters, we should be very careful because it's something that people do not really take care about. I've even heard people say, the Quran says this and the Quran says that, and Allah says this in the Quran and Allah says that in the Quran. And it is not in the Quran. Sometimes they say it and it's a hadith, a saying of the Prophet ﷺ. Sometimes it's not even a hadith, it's just a saying and they claim that it's in the Qur'an. Uh, I have heard many instances like that, that some people just claim that various things from their culture or anything that comes to their head, they claim it is from the Qur'an or they may claim that such and such thing is a hadith or a saying of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whereas in fact and in reality, it is not a hadith at all. So this is a very, very dangerous matter, brothers and sisters. We should not talk about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his deen without knowledge, because that is how the religion becomes corrupted. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he warned us that a time would come, he said that a time would come, where the knowledge would disappear, the knowledge will be taken away. And the Prophet ﷺ said that the knowledge will not be taken away from the minds and from the hearts or from the books, but the knowledge will be taken away by the death of scholars. The scholars will die. And when the scholars die, 
that is when the knowledge will leave us. And then the Prophet ﷺ said, and when the scholars die, only the ignorant people will remain. There will be nothing except ignorant people. And they will be approached for fatwa. They will be approached for religious verdicts and religious rulings. So they will be asked fatwa and they will give fatwa. They will not say, oh, I don't know, I have no knowledge. No, they will actually give the religious rulings. And the Prophet ﷺ said, and they will misguide others and they will misguide themselves. So this is truly a great calamity. When knowledge disappears, when the scholars die. So knowledge is not in the minds or in the hearts or in the books. Knowledge really is in the hands of the scholars because they are the ones who are able to explain the knowledge. They have the depth of understanding. They have done the studies that are required in order to be able to guide us correctly so that we will know what it is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves, what it is that Allah wants us to do, what are the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to keep away from. Now one of the things, my dear brothers and sisters, that is very, very important is that we should keep away from those things that are not part of the religion of Islam. These things are called bid'ah or innovations. And many people, my dear brothers and sisters, they do not understand very well this topic of innovations. There is no doubt that committing an act of innovation is a great sin amongst the great sins. The Prophet himself, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, warned us. He said that the worst thing in the religion are the newly invented matters. The worst thing in the religion are those matters that have been newly introduced in the religion. And every innovation is misguidance. All misguidance is going astray. And all going astray is in the fire. Qulla bidatin dalala wa qulla dalalatin finnar. Every innovation is misguidance and all misguidance is in the hellfire. And that is inevitable that innovations lead us to hellfire. So what are innovations exactly? The word bid'ah means a new thing. And from one point of view, many of the things that we use in our life, like cars, airplanes, watches, the TV, all of these things are in a linguistic sense bid'ah, because they are new things, they are newly invented things. But this is not what the Prophet ﷺ meant when he was talking about bid'ah. What the Prophet ﷺ meant when he talked about innovation and the innovators and when he warned us about even sitting with the innovators, how he warned that on the Day of Judgment there will be some people coming towards him and they will be coming to drink from the pond in paradise. Imagine that day that day of terror, that day of fear, the day when the sun will be brought close, when people will be sweating, some to their ankles in sweat, some to their knees in sweat, some to their waists, some people bridled in sweat. This is the day of judgment, a terrible, frightening day, and people will be so thirsty. And then they will be coming towards the pond, al kothar the pond in paradise. And the Prophet wasallam. He will recognize his ummah, he will recognize the Muslims by the place where they had made wudu. Because their limbs will shine, their face, their arms, their head, their feet will shine from the places they had made wudu. And a group will come and they will be expecting to drink from the pond in paradise. But then the angels will come and they will make a barrier between the Prophet wasallam and them. And the Prophet will say, he will say, Ummati, Ummati, these are from my Ummah, my Ummah. And the angels will say to the Prophet wasallam, No, you don't know what new things they introduced into the religion after you. They made bid'ah, they introduced new things into the religion. And the Prophet wasallam said, Be gone, be gone with the innovators. Indeed, the Prophet wasallam, he forbade us from sitting with the innovators, from sheltering the innovators, and warned us against them 
ordering us to be very careful about them, not to support them. All of these things are very, very severe warnings against the evil of innovation. So it's very important that we understand correctly what is an innovation and who are the innovators. Now, brothers and sisters, I ask you to think about this just from a logical point of view for a second. Of course, one of the things that you will find is that the people who are innovators, those people who are actually innovators in the religion, and they are practicing innovations, and they are preaching and teaching innovations, and they are even calling people to participate in their innovations, of course, if they are ready to do all of those things, they are going to want to confuse people about this issue, and they're also going to want to make it as if, oh, this is not very important. Who are these people who keep talking about bid'ah, bid'ah, bid'ah anyway? I mean, if you hear someone saying that, you can be pretty sure that that person is an innovator. Why otherwise are they so upset about a person talking about something that the Prophet ﷺ used to talk about all the time and he used to warn us against so severely? And when I say all the time, really the Prophet ﷺ used to mention the issue of innovation a lot. Because in the Khutbah al Hajjah, which is the Khutbah or the, the Khutbah of Need, which the Prophet ﷺ he used to begin his lectures with, he actually warned every time against bid'ah. This is what he used to do, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So if this thing was not important, why did the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mention it so many times? Indeed, when someone came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the Prophet had given a sermon, and the people thought, this looks as if it's a farewell sermon. So a man said, he stood up and said, O Messenger of Allah, it seems as if this is a farewell sermon, so advise us. The Prophet ﷺ gave some very beautiful advice. He advised the people, he said, I advise you to fear Allah, to have taqwa of Allah, and to hear and obey your Amir, even if he is an Abyssinian slave, and cling to my Sunnah and the Sunnah of the Khulafa al Rashidin, the rightly guided successors, and bite it with your teeth. And beware of the innovations, beware of the new things in the religion. Because every new thing in the religion is misguidance, all misguidance is going astray, and all going astray is in the fire. So the Prophet wasallam he warned us, and he said actually at the beginning of that, I forgot to mention, he said, after me you will see great differing. So this is what he said, and this is his prediction. This is again some of the knowledge of the unseen that Allah gave to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. After me you will see great ikhtilaf. Even though he left us two things, the Qur'an and the Sunnah. If we hang on to them, we will never go astray. Very clear, very easy to understand. But in spite of that, there is great differing. So the Prophet warned us, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we should follow the sunnah and we should avoid those newly invented things. So the newly invented things here does not mean the aeroplane and the car and the toothbrush, you know, that we brush our teeth with and these type of things. No, these are from the worldly things. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man amala amalan laysa alayhi amruna fahuwa rad which means whoever introduces into this affair of ours something that is not from it will have it rejected. So the issue of bid'ah is concerning the affair which belongs to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And what is that? That is the deen of Islam. And that is also made clear when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he found a group of people, they were cross-fertilizing the date palms. They used to take, for example, the leaf or the stalk of one date palm and they would put it in another and they would do that to increase the yield of the dates. And when the Prophet ﷺ saw them doing that, he said to them, maybe it's better if you don't do that. So they stopped doing it. And then after some time, the yield of the dates became less. So they came to the Prophet and they complained. O Messenger of Allah, you said to us not to do that. 
Well, he didn't. He said, maybe it's better if you don't do that. And so he stopped it and our yield became less. So the Prophet said something very important. He said to them, if I give you my opinion about something from the dunya, from the world, it's just my opinion. I'm just like you. I just have an opinion. I just gave you my opinion. But if I tell you something from the religion, from the deen, then you must follow that. And so that makes it clear the difference between the worldly things and the religion. Of course, the religion can include worldly things as well. There's no doubt about that. So the difference is when the Prophet ﷺ ordered us with something, when he told us about how to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we should follow that absolutely and we should obey what the Prophet ﷺ said. So the matter of the Prophet is the matter of the deen, the religion of Islam. And so therefore, whoever introduces into the religion of Islam something that is not from it, something who introduces it, it will be rejected. It will not be accepted. That is because we can only worship Allah the way that Allah has told us to worship Him. And that is following by following the Prophet So the definition of a bid'ah or an innovation is anything that resembles any action through which closeness to Allah is sought. So it's something that a person does. This is a religious innovation, the ones that have been forbidden. Anything through which closeness to Allah is sought. So you person does a thing, they think they're going to get close to Allah, that emulates the Sharia. So it, it looks like it's from something from the Sharia. It has a similarity to something from Islam, but it is not supported by an evidence. There is no proof for that. In other words, you can't find it in the Quran, you can't find it in the teachings of the Prophet ﷺ, not the action itself, nor the way in which the action is done. So these are two important things. The action itself needs to have a proof in order for us to do it. And also the way the action is done also needs to have a proof in order for us to do it. So this is the issue of innovation that we should be careful of. If we want to worship Allah, we should do it according, clearly according to the way of the Sunnah, not only the action itself, but the way in which the action has been done. That is what we need to stick with because this issue of innovation and bid'ah is a very, very serious matter a very, very serious issue in the religion of Islam. And many people have gone astray due to ignorance of the religion, due to sometimes following their desires, due to sometimes blindly following those people they think who have knowledge, and sometimes they do have knowledge, but blindly following them without questioning them, and also due to imitating the ways and the actions of the disbelievers as we mentioned previously about that tree, that and what, on which they wanted to hang their swords to get blessings. So we should avoid imitating those rites and rituals and practices of those people who are not from the religion of Islam. That is one of the ways that innovation happens. So until next time, my dear brothers and sisters, repent to Allah, ask Him for forgiveness for your sins, keep away from the innovations, follow the sunnah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.